Welcome back and thanks for staying with us here on Morning Live. Now this afternoon, uh, scores of people across the globe will be part of the virtual 19th annual Nelson Mandela Lecture uh, to be delivered uh, this year by former International Criminal Court Prosecutor uh, Fatou Bensouda. Bensouda was the first woman and first African to serve as prosecutor of the ICC from 2012 until this year. And her duties included the investigation and prosecution of the crimes under the jurisdiction of, of the International Criminal Court, namely genocide, crimes against humanity and, of course, war crimes. And during her address, uh, uh, Madame Bansuda uh, will uh, also examine the potential impact uh, of the rule of law and international criminal justice on society and in the creation of the kind of society of which the world can be proud of. Uh, we wait to hear what she has to say on that score. And to tell us more about uh, today's 19th annual Nelson Mandela lecture, we're joined by Siloha Tan who's the chief executive of the Nelson Mandela Foundation. So, look, good to see you again. Uh, welcome to Morning Live. Thank you so much, uh, SK. Good to see you too. So, former um, ICC prosecutor Fatou Bensouda's uh, lecture is titled The Rule of Law, International Criminal Justice and Its Contribution to Sustainable Development. Talk to us about that. You know, um, always a question around themes and, and how these are decided upon. You know, I, I need to uh, firstly give uh, credit to the, to the board of the foundation because uh, um, the issue of the rule of law um, was decided on uh, that uh, that would be the theme already last year. And the board thought that uh, this year we should continue on this, uh, looking at the sustainable development uh, issues of inequality, but centered around the rule of law. And at the time, we didn't know that here in South Africa would have July. Uh, events of July where, where they, we had unrest and we had looting um, and uh, where there were threats that or there were threats that uh, some amongst us didn't want to then uh, also have be, uh, the constitution applied to them uh, or that the rule of law applied to them. So that, that, uh, that's what we then thought uh, would then uh, work this year. I think it's important also that uh, maybe we pause um, to, to think of the life that was lost of um, who died uh, horrifically um, and her body dismembered uh, the way it was. And it's uh, people like her that we say to her family, your loss is ours and uh, our deepest condolences are passed to you. But uh, Madame Bensouda will be talking about precisely that. How do we build a democracy that's safe? How do we make sure that our democracy doesn't eat its own children, uh, that it doesn't become a violent democracy? Uh, whether it becomes uh, on, on issues of um, unemployment uh, and uh, uh, the rule of law, as we said. Uh, and, of course, this lecture comes at a time when the International Criminal Court has also come under scrutiny about how it's handled some of its cases, especially involving certain African leaders compared to leaders of Western countries. Uh, does this still have relevance uh, in terms of the rule of law and what needs to be addressed? Oh, yes, uh, it does. And in fact, uh, when we were briefing with uh, uh, Madame Bensouda, uh, she indicated that one of the things that you'd love to also uh, focus on a little bit uh, was on how South Africa can be a torchbearer uh, based on our history and our constitution. Uh, that uh, uh, is one of the things that South Africa leads with is uh, the issue of equality, uh, whether it doesn't, it, that it shouldn't matter who you are. Um, including the Western countries. So I think if there's one person that we can credit uh, for also making sure that um, none are above, are seen to be above the law, um, it's, uh, it's how she tried her best to make sure that the ICC served all. I mean, if uh, you, we, uh, also Fimo Kwena reminded us about how she tackled the U.S. Uh, government and the soldiers of the U.S. Uh, in Afghanistan. And I, I think it's important that we always uh, remind ourselves that this is a person who has a track record of uh, looking at issues of the rule of law across the board. And if we are to have a sustainable development that we want, we must ensure that the law applies to all. 
And then, of course, if we look at um, the lecture, Bensuda will, of course, also examine the potential and the impact of the rule of law and international uh, law and criminal justice in particular on society, uh, looking at uh, the creation of the type of society so that uh, we would love to see as humankind. Um, what lessons should South Africa take from that tenure that she served, given where we find ourselves right now as a country? I think uh, uh, one of the things that we hope she will uh, also delve uh, on, uh, into um, SK is looking at how we, all of us must ensure that we are constitutional beings. And by, by saying being constitutional beings, it means that um, all of us must not always rely on police to uh, uh, make sure that uh, so something right happens, but that we must do the right thing, uh, knowing that uh, it's only when we do the right thing that we can then uh, build a society um, that uh, Madiba, Madiba dreamed of. And I think uh, it, 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 this is a person who has been saying consistently, uh, this is being uh, Madame Bensuda, um, that uh, we shouldn't always be saying to leaders, whether they be African or that uh, they, they, they must wait for the ICC or the Constitutional Court or for any court to decide on their fate. They must do the right thing. If you look at South Africa in terms of corruption, we can only deal with uh, these things if we begin to be constitutional beings. By, by stealing from the state, I should feel that I'm stealing from the poor. And that's what Madiba feared most, um, even when he wrote his um, uh, uh, sequel to Long Walk to Freedom, which uh, Ndate Mandalanga then finished off. And in there, he reflects on how leaders forget about why they should continue to be constitutional beings why we should always try our best uh, to do uh, the little bit that we can to make sure that uh, we build a country that we can all be proud of, that protects its little ones, that protects the vulnerable, the, being the old ones also, but that it also looks after uh, those who uh, feel discarded, the forgotten ones, uh, because those, we tend to think the rule of law should apply to them, not to the elite. Mm. How do you respond, Silla, to uh, critics who would say that if you look at the foundations of uh, many uh, eminent persons, uh, like the Nelson Mandela Foundation, the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation, and numerous others that have been established, how do you respond to criticism that some of these foundations have now become embroiled in uh, the political discourse um, and the body politic of the day, and as such uh, could be betraying the founders in whose names they've been established? I think that uh, that's a very lazy argument, um, because if you look at uh, the foundations that you've mentioned, um, this uh, were uh, one of the some of the leading uh, foundations when it comes to calling out um, uh, issues relating to um, uh, state capture, for example. Had we been quiet back then, um, I don't think we would have uh, also had the uproar that we had in our country. Uh, in many instances, I remember people saying to us, you're becoming a pressure group. You are becoming people who are now uh, doing things, something that they shouldn't be doing. What should we be doing? Uh, part of the mandate of, the, of these foundations is to ensure that um, uh, all uh, do what is right and that we, we make sure that our forebears who drafted the Constitution are proud about what we are trying to do today. And that's part of the mandate of these foundations. And I think um, uh, by, by them being shut down to say, don't do it, uh, we'll have a society where uh, civil society always has to second guess itself instead of always being in the f forefront of fighting for human rights. Mm. Uh, hindsight, as they say, always 2020. Is there more that you believe that can and should be done in the current discourse? I think there's more that we should be doing. The, the statistics that were released by Stats SA uh, just uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday are disturbing. And I think all of us um, should be worried that uh, one day we'll wake up to a country that um, has 60%, uh, 70% unemployment. What kind of country is that? that that's, that's a country that um, has a, a, a potential to have more and more unrest. 
And I think uh, if you have uh, more than 50% uh, of your young people uh, that uh, are waiting to be used by any force, um, you are then playing with danger. And I think we should be doing more as civil society, as government, and as uh, uh, the, the private sector to join hands to make sure that uh, we, we pull up those who are feeling discarded. I spent some time with my colleagues in KZN um, to help with relief work, um, uh, SK, and one was disturbed by the number of people who felt that uh, this unrest actually um, might have been good because uh, they then began to uh, make sure that all of us uh, didn't normalize what was abnormal. We've began to normalize uh, the poor, that uh, the discarded people are part of us, and therefore you can just live your lives as the elite, um, as uh, you, you choose. And, uh, and I think uh, we need to now be doing more as a nation uh, to try to change the plight of the poor. Until we do so, we are in trouble. Mm. And, and many people are responding to our question of the day this morning where we are talking and asking about solutions to these crisis levels of unemployment in our country um, are saying exactly what you've just said now. You know, the fact that people have become dismayed. We've normalized things that should never be uh, in our society. And now we've almost reached a point where everybody's looking around uh, in total uh, this dis, uh, dis, uh, disarray because we don't know what to do uh, to solve the problems that we have. So how would you, would you encourage South Africans? What role do you think um, the Nelson Mandela Foundation can play in making sure that we actually change that tide in, in, in the real way uh, so that people can have more hope and, and, and that we do start taking our future literally back into our own hands as people? You know, SK, you used the word that I would have uh, used, uh, hope. I think um, the, one of the things that we keep sharing from the archive of Madiba is how, as uh, Bishop Mpumulana called him, the ancestor of hope, tends to then bring forward um, what hope can do when you then um, try to say to people, you must take the future in your own hands, that we must try our best to pull each other up. And I think um, at a time like this, there shouldn't be paralysis. And that's what we're seeing setting in, where um, you, you find a, a big leadership falling apart. And, it's a, a, and, a, and what happened around the, 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 the unrest, for example, showed us that it's when um, the, the little leadership, as I call it, in an inverted commas, when um, you have uh, the little person saying, I need to contribute myself, I need to stop what I see as wrong, and I need to then try and contribute to a South Africa that I, I dream of, not for those who are alive now, but those who are still to be born. So as the foundation, we've been convening dialogues. Um, we've been making sure that uh, early childhood development, for example, works as well as it should. Uh, yesterday, my, co my colleagues convened ECD practitioners at the foundation to try to see how do we make sure that education at its foundation phase works best. Because it's when we plant the right seeds um, that we then make sure that those who are, as they grow up, they then see that the future they dream of is possible, that they can pull themselves out of um, the poverty that they find themselves in. And I, 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 you're speaking to someone who has been gone, who's gone through that as a child, as a child of a single parent, um, uh, many nights where you go to bed with nothing, not having eaten anything. And it, it's, it's when we don't forget that kind of past that we've gone through, that each one of us say, that past that I've gone through, others shouldn't. Let me contribute a little bit so that others have a lighter load. Uh, and they can then see that tomorrow is better than today. Mm. And of course, Silo, just in um, closing, Again, today, um, today's lecture taking place against this uh, pandemic, uh, the background of a pandemic uh, that have gripped us for uh, the better part of uh, two lecture seasons now. Uh, how has that complicated things? And also, uh, where do people tune in if they want to uh, watch and listen this afternoon? Yes, yeah, so um, the, the lecture will be broadcast, and I'm happy to say that uh, the SABC again has come full force and um, it will be on SABC2 and also on 404. Um, and I'm hoping that a couple of radio stations will also carry it. 
uh, we haven't confirmed this. But also, um, if you want to log on, if you can't then be in front of your TV, you can uh, go to events at nelsonmandela.org. Or you can go to our website, uh, nelsonmandela.org, and you'd be able to um, log on. You can go to our Facebook page uh, at, at Nelson Mandela, Twitter as well, at Nelson Mandela. And that way you can then um, log on. I was saying to you earlier on of air that um, uh, what, what we've been finding interesting is that uh, sometimes you, 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 are, you have a sense of relief that you have it digitally because uh, the costs are less. Um, but you still miss the human touch um, that you must have a person come through to South Africa. They must look at the plight of the people, be able to be in touch with people directly. And that's what we miss most. Um, we also miss uh, uh, seeing people uh, where we, we can have SK uh, be on the red carpet. And we are hoping that you'll dress up SK and uh, as you then uh, uh, sit on your, uh, on your lounge and you, you share those photos as you then um, watch the lecture live from your home. So I'm hoping that uh, people will still be enjoying it from their home, being careful. Those who, who, who want to vaccinate, please do vaccinate. We encourage you to vaccinate so that we come out of this sooner than um, uh, we, 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 we believe. We didn't think that this year will again be virtual and we are here again. Mm. Salah. So, uh, I heard that challenge. Uh, I'm not quite accepting the, the, the dressing up, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see what happens later on. But uh, looking forward to the lecture all the same. And thank you so much for engaging us this morning. Uh, Silo Hatang is the chief executive of the Nelson Mandela Foundation, talking to us about this afternoon's 19th Nelson Mandela lecture presented uh, this year by former International Criminal Court prosecutor, Madame Fatou Ben Souda. And really looking Looking forward to it, Leanne. Um, you know, we'll be watching, we'll be listening, uh, no doubt. Um, I, I, I will be dressed. Um, I'm just Good. not sure that I will Hear be that. dressed up. <laughs> Please, please be dressed and, uh, yeah, okay. That, that's a good thing because I'm not oh. sure we want to see you posting pictures of you not dressed on not the couch. Happening. Never, <laughs> never. Well, well, no, I mean, I'm speaking for myself. I'm sure there are a lot of people who no, ah, much prefer no, no, that, but no, not no. me. Yeah, me, I, I strive not to traumatize anybody. Anybody, I'm with you, I'm yes. with you. I am with you on that one. But, yeah, it should be a good one. So tune in, watch that one, and uh, I hope that we get those key messages out of it. So, But I do believe what, this, I agree with Cello. It's just, you know, you just want that human touch these days. You just want to be with people, but it's... We've got to wait again. Indeed. And we've got to say goodbye. So you have a wonderful day, everybody.